I got the entire outside now glued on. And I trimmed it to fit the initial piece that I attached it to. Added a little more shape to this here so it can form better to my body when I'm wearing it. I glued this on using a hot glue gun and some Gorilla Super Glue. I use a super glue to attach the main part of it and hot glue to just kind of fill in, give a nice bead here so it doesn't separate so easy. And I've also been gradually trimming and adjusting it uh, slowly, trial and error, as I put the cowl on while wearing this to make sure that it all fits and lines up pretty good. And next step is going to be Mod Podge to give it some texture before we plaster dip and then paint it. So before I move on to Mod Podging and texturizing and all that, I've taken and I've cut out at an angle the inside somewhat. It's a little rough though from the exacto knife. And since the bottom of this cow piece here scoops in at an angle, I want it to sit and be able to rotate whenever I turn my head a little bit more evenly in the cowl. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take first some rougher sandpaper and you sand around on the inside and help take out any of those imperfections and smooth it out as much as possible. You may do a little more trimming with the X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors along the way to get that angle in there so that Whenever the headpiece has to turn or rotate in, it's not dragging it with it too much. So I'm trying to get a nice clean angled edge in there. And what I do in between sanding down layers is I will heat the foam, which will then help seal it up and make it a little bit more dense and easier to sand. At least I feel like it does. So now that I've got it all sanded down and used the heavy grit, and then I used a 300 grit to smooth that out, I'm going to heat these edges again, and then these little gaps and holes here. I'm going to fill in with some hot glue. I'm going to smooth and finish that out, and I'll show you how I do that. Alright, I've filled in all the little gaps with hot glue. And what I'm going to do now, this isn't a necessary part, but I do this, so I'm going to show you. I take the hot edge of the glue gun nozzle, wipe off any excess glue that may be stuck to it. And what I'm going to do is take this and run it along the edge to smooth it out. And obviously this isn't the intended use of it, and if you maybe have a hot knife or a wood burner, any other type of attachment for the wood burner that's flat, you could probably smooth it out that way. It just saves on sanding time. I don't like using silicone on an area like this where you're going to have a lot of abrasion and movement from the mask itself whenever you turn your head. It's all smoothed off and shiny. And then, as a final touch, I'm going to take some 300 grit sandpaper and just lightly buff it smooth the rest of the way. And after that, I'll start the Mod Podge. 
So for this part, I'm using Matte Mod Podge, and I'm going to start by applying pretty generous amounts to it. I need to apply it fairly quickly. It starts to get tacky pretty fast. I'll try to cover this big area here. Okay, and as it starts to get tacky, I can begin to add these brush strokes into it. And the tackier it gets, as it starts to dry and get absorbed into the foam, the more texture is added whenever it dries. And that's kind of the direction that I want the texture and the brush strokes to go. So I've worked around from the start, and if you notice here, I have the brush strokes going in the direction of the various tendons and stuff that I put in this. That's going to be your under texture. The outer texture that I'm going to do on this is going to be from the plastic dip. Okay, after the first layer, a lot of it had absorbed into the foam. So once it dried, I went ahead and did a second layer and textured it very much in the same way. And as soon as this dries, I'm going to start plastic dipping it. Okay, the Mod Podge is dried, and I got the nice under texture that I wanted. And unfortunately, when I went to get the plastic dip, all they had was white. They didn't have any black. But I have some Rust-Oleum Flat Protective Enamel. It's a flat black. And I also have a respirator and gloves. All right, I've been shaking the plastic dip for about five minutes. It's a fresh can, so I wanted to make sure that it's good mixed and good and stirred. I got my painter's mask on and my glove, and I've got this sitting on a piece of cardboard so I can rotate it. And I've set up cardboard in the background so that it catches all the overspray. So I'll make a mess everywhere. You want to apply the plastic dip so that it has an even wet appearance. Just like that. Okay, I've gone ahead and finished spraying the first coat. And like I said, the first coat you apply pretty thick and pretty even. And right now it's going to look like... A lot of the detail has been lost as far as the texturing, but as the plastic dip dries, what it will do is it will adhere and shrink up tightly to all that detail from the Mod Podge and the texturing that you put in with the brush. Okay, the plastic dip, the first coat is dried, and that was a nice, even shiny coat. And you can see, you can still see the various lines and stuff that I put in it through it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the plastic dip again. But this time, I am not going to do a solid layer. I'm going to let it beat up in little droplets all over and let that dry and then repeat the process. little droplets everywhere. That's going to give the pebbled outer texture to this piece. Same as it did to the Batman cowl itself. Okay, so it's been about four applications of just spraying uneven beads onto it. And you can see it's starting to get the pebbled contrast. But you can still see the lines and everything that I painted into it with the Mod Podge. 
And whenever I go through after this phase and I paint it all matte black, part of the reason I like this dual texturing is it really catches the light, even whenever it's a matte piece, which this is going to be. You can see now in the light with it being bright white that, you know, it's catching everything rather well. But once I paint certain pieces matte black, it just doesn't seem to show up as well. For some reason, this technique seems to help a lot. Okay, so the plastic dipping is done. Pretty happy with the texture and the way that it came out. The way the light catches it, and even if I want to do another layer, I can do that again after I paint it. I could always replastic it, but if I don't like it, to get more texture, and just go back and paint it again. So here is the finished product. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go test this out now that it's dry and take some photos and put together a little slideshow at the end for you guys. Uh, thank you for watching this and I hope this was helpful and that you enjoyed it.